Hey, y'all. Man, 2020 has been a crazy year, hadn't it? Let me get rid of this thing. Can't be too careful nowadays. Gotta protect yourself, fellas. Ladies too, I guess, if you're out there watching. Man, look at the glare, that's terrible. Hey, I want to say hi to my uh, blacksmithing friends. I haven't made any blacksmithing content in quite a while, and I guess I kind of owe you guys a little bit of an apology, but uh, by far for me, the content that I have created on YouTube that's gotten the most interest has been things based around blacksmithing. I built a couple forges, made some knives, uh, and uh, have not been really consistent with that content creation, and I apologize for that. I had to move a couple years ago from my job, never really got my blacksmithing shop set back up and uh, it's just been a challenge. So I have created some other content based on some DIY projects and some other interests of mine. But I wanted to talk today a little bit about my history and how I got into blacksmithing. Like a lot of people out there in recent years, it's because of the Forged and Fire TV series is what sparked my interest in blacksmithing. And I've always been a person who liked to see if he could figure out how to do things and love working with my hands and with tools and that sort of thing. So. It just was kind of a good fit for me to get into. But I wanted to talk a little bit about it, you know, how I progressed through um, from where I started to where I am now. Share a little bit of a surprise with you guys at the end of the video. Um, got a monster steal on an anvil this weekend that my wife found on Facebook Marketplace, and I want to show you guys that. And then talk about some upcoming projects that I'm going to be able to work on now because I actually have a real anvil for, uh, I was going to say for a change, but first time ever uh, <laughs> so stick with me check this out and i uh, hope you enjoy the video and look forward to making some more blacksmithing content over the next several months thanks a lot so what you're looking at here is my very first anvil old trailer hitch i'll pop up a card here for the video that i made my first forge made out of an old propane tank and some junk i had laying around I used this for my first few projects. I made a set of tongs on there out of rebar, which I'll show you here, that I still use today. And I forged my first few knife projects on this. That two by two bar is solid steel, and I've used that um, hitch ball and that bolt sticking up out of it to uh, bend things around. I had this mounted to a couple of logs and uh, used it for quite a while, and it works. Not the greatest, but enough to get started so if you're looking at getting started and you think you just can't do it because you need this anvil that they're asking crazy amounts of money for nowadays um, you really don't there's a piece of railroad track that i picked up at a flea market type store cut a piece off of that and made an anvil there's the anvil i tried to put a piece of steel on top and a couple of layers and uh, create a nice smooth face i added some weight to the base there's a video on that as well I'll post a card for, but it fell apart because my welding sucks and I just didn't have a good enough welder. And so I moved from that to this 55 pound Central Forge anvil that my wife bought me from Harbor Freight and have done several projects on that as well. I made the base out of some stuff I had laying around, added a piece of steel under it to raise it up a bit, plus add some weight. There's a steel base on there. I used to throw a sandbag underneath there to add some weight as well. Um, but now I got a new anvil to work on, and it's very old but new. I made that hardy tool. I'll post a card for that too up top. Um, but I just wanted to kind of encourage you guys to just find a way to get started if you're interested and have some fun doing it. So... All the old experts mount their anvils on a log or a stump, I mean, I'm sorry. So uh, I cut a chunk out of this fallen tree here on my property in Mississippi and rolled it up the hill to my shop so I could put an anvil on it. It was an interesting <laughs> project just getting that sucker up to the shop, to tell you the truth. Um, but it's, it's heavy, but it's nowhere near as heavy as this colonial anvil that my wife found on Facebook marketplace so here's my stump I tried to level it off you see the sawdust there um, got it rolled up to the shop and I'm gonna have to get me some help to get this anvil out of the back of my SUV and put it on that stump there but uh, 
My wife found a anvil listed on Facebook Marketplace. Look at this thing. My best guess is that it weighs somewhere between 180 and 220 pounds. And my best guess on research, you see that thick heel on that anvil. It doesn't have a table on the front. Um, I think that thing is 100% sure it's made before 1830 and probably as far back as maybe 1780, 1790. So it's over 200 years old. Um, there's some measurements on there, but the face is about five inches wide and about 11 inches long. The whole anvil from the tip of the horn, horn to the heel is about 19 inches. Um, the base of the thing at the feet is like 11 by eight. And uh, the anvil is about 11 inches tall or 10 inches tall um, but that sucker is heavy um, so i drove about a half hour and met a guy today on the side of the road basically and picked it up he didn't know what he had but uh he needed 200 bucks i guess so i just bought this antique 200 year old 200 pound anvil for 200 bucks and that is unheard of in today's marketplace the guy just didn't know what he had but i'm as excited as i could be about having this this anvil in my shop and i'm gonna be able to pound out some steel on this thing I, there's no way i can move it by myself um, so here's my son helping me get that thing over to the uh, stand i'm gonna put it on and I really thought that log was pretty big, but when I set this thing on top of it, the base of the anvil is wider than the log that it's sitting on. So anyway, <laughs> man, I'm excited to have this thing in the shop. It's gonna be it. So I mentioned being a Forged and Fire fan, and I just recently started watching the new series or the new season and uh, decided I wanted to try to make some Damascus steel by hand, but that would have been almost impossible with that little anvil that I had prior to picking this thing up. And I had no idea I was gonna get my hands on this thing. I've been looking around, uh, but uh, this sucker is beautiful, man. That's a collector's item. 200 bucks is just unbelievable deal on that anvil. So. I am really excited to get started on it. I got myself some 1084 and some uh, 15N20, and I am going to try to make some hand-hammered Damascus on this thing and then do a knife project. So I look forward to seeing you guys on some upcoming projects. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here, and I do apologize for um, the lack of blacksmithing content recently. But I'm back.